I also showed you that you give me something in here, I can simulate it there. But big deal. That's what I knew already. It would be nice if I could show you that I could take anything in here and simulate it here. That would collapse those two. And that's kind of what Michael's asking about. He says, well, you showed me that this takes exponential time, and that just leaves the picture the way it is. If I could prove to you that I couldn't do it in anything better, then it would show that this border will never collapse. If I could prove to you that that simulation has to take XP time, then it, it affects this border, and it shows that this border is... In fact, if you could do it, it's a huge result. Showing that polynomial time is different than polynomial space is the next most open question after P versus NP. It's not quite as strong as showing P is different than NP, but it's pretty darn good. <laughs> okay, shall we move on to topic two? Any more questions on this one? I'm, I'm still a little, still trying to kind of understand how the algorithm itself is going to work. Um, I guess the, the piece that's confusing me is mm -hmm. that we now have, you know, we've taken this sort of this exponential expansion tree of all the possible configurations of our finite state machine, and we're now sort of treating it as a graph and it's passed through the graph. I'm just not quite sure. It's a how, tree, actually, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just not quite sure exactly how we're kind of keeping track of, you know, sort of where, which, which of these paths we've tried and, you know, which don't need to be tried again. If, if, we're, not, if we're not taking exponential space to store every configuration. You, you're not even, you don't store hardly any of it. You store hardly any of this tree. All you do is use the ability to construct pieces of the tree very, very often. You do that an exponential number of times, but you don't actually store the tree explicitly anywhere. You don't even store a path from the top to bottom explicitly anywhere at any given time. Right. But when we're, when we're, taking, when we're going through this L, you know, try, mm -hmm. try everything L, that's, that's definitely an exponential number of things. Right. If we were to write it all out, it would be exponential. So, so my question is, you know, without, without writing, the, is, is, it, is there a sequence somehow to all of this L so we just kind of know? You can order it any way you want. Well, you're going you're gonna to generate them all. So you could generate them all in some kind of a reasonable order. You know, the tape symbols, the state starts in the first tape symbol, all the other possible tape symbols in lexicographic order, the state moves over to the next, the head moves over to the next spot, all the tapes in lexicographic order. You can certainly generate this out in some systematic order and remember where you were up to. It's the control of your program that remembers where you were up to, is the real answer to your question. And, and it, the control of your program is very, very crucial. It remembers that you tried these and you didn't try the others. And at any point, it only stores one of these L's and a stack full of all the others until you get to the base case. So as far as the configuration it actually remembers at any time, it's the initial, the final, and a stack of other configurations equal to the number it takes to, to have the distance between the original and the, uh, and the final repeatedly until you're down to one step. So, so yeah, you hardly look at the thing at all. And you could really do this. Like if you were in that cave and you had this book, you could really do this if you had a lot of time. You start on the first page, you're trying to get to the gold on the last page, and you know that there's presumably 80 steps in between. Right. So you say, I'm just going to try all the pages and see if there's a way to get from this page to this page in 40, and from this page to this page in 40. And now you remember that middle page. Put it aside somewhere. You write it on a separate piece of paper. I'm on page 32. That's that's the page, I think. And now you say, OK, well, I've got to do this recursively. So the second part, I'll do later. And right now, I'll just concentrate on the first part. I've got to pick another halfway spot. Say that's on page 6. Another halfway spot, that's on page 4. And now I'm down to things of size 1. So I can get rid of 4, because I know there's a way to get from 1 to 6. And now I work between page 6 and 32. So you really are not storing too many configurations, and you just remember how much you've done. I guess your question is, how do you know how much of the path you've done? It's because this control keeps track of that. Well, it's also just sort of where is that book store? Because uh, you know, I mean, I, the place where your little metaphor doesn't quite hold is that if you have the book, yeah. then you've taken sort of exponential space to write the book out. Right. So, yeah, so right. You don't really have the book. What you have is, is... You're kind of figuring out the pages as you go. It's sort of like you're just... You're going back through the book. What you really have, that's right. What you really have is a description that tells you, uh, you don't really have a book. Right. You've got a machine. And you can type in a page of this hypothetical book, and it'll tell you what's on that page. That's what you really have. And you're allowed to write down a few pages of where you were. 
So yes, so that's a better metaphor. So we have a Turing machine that has, you know, maybe several small tapes or something like that. There's little areas in the tape where we're keeping track of a few key things. Right. That allow, that allow us right. To generate. But most of what you use but is the ability to generate. Bounded, you know, it's bounded by, by, yeah, by very little. Yeah, by S squared of n. So there's S of n configurations that you need to keep track of on the stack. Each one of the configurations takes S of n space. That's S squared of n. That's Savage's theorem. Yeah. That's a good point you brought up about the metaphor. You don't really have this book you're looking at. You have the ability to, you have a machine that lets you know what's in the book. You give the machine a page, it tells you what's on that page. That's, that's a much better way. It's a Pokédex, as my kids play with. Many of you know about Pokémon. You're adults, why would you know? Unless you're that weird big fat guy in The Simpsons who owns a comic book store, then you know about it. <laughs> Whoa. Since I've done that, yeah. <laughs> All right, second topic today. about this for a minute. Let's consider Turing machines that work in a certain amount of space. Let's say linear space. Okay, they never use more than linear space. Guaranteed. And I want to know something about this set. The set of all Turing machines that accept themselves, but, they're, but these are Turing machines that are linear space bounded. They're guaranteed never to use more than linear space. Everyone understand the difference between these and general Turing machines? General Turing machines can do anything they want, run amok on the tape, and these Turing machines are guaranteed that they never use more than linear space on the tape. So here's the input on one tape. They use another tape that never use more than the length of their input. And I want to know, can you decide this set? Can you decide, given a Turing machine like this, whether it will accept itself, yes or no? Guaranteed that this machine never uses more than S of n symbols. So do you think this is decidable or undecidable? Can you write a program that decides this? Is n the number of states of the Turing machine? n is the size of the input. This is a Turing machine that takes an input and never uses more space than the size of its input. So in the case of accepting itself, n would be the size of the Turing machine. Does the machine have to conform to this as well? No, it doesn't. The machine can right. That's a Right, Jeff asked a super question. Does the machine that does this have to be a member, have to live in the city? Right? That's the next half of what I'm going to talk about. If I asked you whether there was a way to do this with a machine that lived in this town, the answer would be no. not how many steps this one is taking. And if this thing ever takes more than this many steps and doesn't say yes, then it stops the simulation and says, I know this machine will never, ever accept. Because it's supposed to accept within this much space. It's supposed to accept without using any more. And it's already used enough steps to fill this tape in every single possible way it possibly could. So from now on, it's in some loop. And if it hasn't accepted up till now, it won't accept after now. It cuts out the infinite possibility into a finite category. And it's the same idea that we've done three or four times already in different ways. The ability that if you have a space bound on something, it implies a time bound. And if you have a time bound, then after that time bound is over, you know if it hasn't accepted yet, there is an infinite loop and it will never accept. So a general Turing machine can decide this set. This is decidable. Okay, this is the kind of question you could get on a problem set, and the answer would be this is recursive, this set. It's more than recursively enumerable. You could actually decide this yes or no. The yes part's easy, you just simulate. The no part's a little harder. You count up to here, and when you get past this number, if the answer hasn't been yes, then the answer's no. Wouldn't it be possible to break through the space bound before getting to that, though, if that's all you did, is just build up your space? And I'm not sure I understand, Chris. Ask like me. This is, if something takes this long, then it's guaranteed to have 
<laughs> and continues, it's guaranteed to use more than it's allotted space. If something took this long, if it right. took this much amount of time, we're simulating this machine, it took this much amount of time, and it hasn't accepted yet. 